there is no real person. A man must become quite open to himself without deception. This is true relaxation. He must cease to hold himself in certain beliefs about himself, poses, pictures, ideas of himself. Anxiety and fear, which prevent us relaxing, subtly arise when a man endeavors to maintain what is not really himself. He lives on one side of himself at a time, and the rest is dark to him. He is not open to himself. The false personality, always preoccupied with different forms of internal considering, with questions of whether a good impression is being made and appearances kept up, causes a strain in being. It is as if a man kept on standing on his toes and did not understand why he felt exhausted. All the time he is keeping something up which is not himself something imaginary something which does not fit him. And this happens with everyone. If we had no false personality all this anxiety and nervousness which all secretly feel about themselves, whether they admit it or not, would vanish. Not only would our relationship to others change, but our relationship to ourselves. We then would understand what it is to relax. One reason is that the false personality can only love itself. Self-love, which attributes everything to itself, keeps us in anxiety for it is afraid of loss of esteem and position. Now false personality never admits anything. It is always right. If it pretends to confess its sins, it does so out of vanity, as a pose, to show off, to gain merit and applause. This absurd thing composed of self-evident lies and false imagination, you might think easily seen and destroyed. On the contrary its existence is most difficult to see and its strength is extraordinary. It will neither allow itself to be found out nor allow ourselves to find ourselves out that is, what we really are. If it did, its power would be destroyed, and we should be free from our greatest enemy that is, the person we imagine ourselves to be, whom we serve as slaves from the moment we wake up in the morning to the moment we fall asleep at night. So we cannot deeply relax when we serve in this way, for false personality will keep on making us correspond to what it imagines itself to be. It will not allow a person to be at rest, but must prod him to act in the way he is supposed to act, to keep up his reputation, his character role. So if a man has a picture of himself as being a hard worker the false personality will drive him to work hard even at the point of death. It makes each of you keep up your pictures of yourself. Now the strength of the false personality depends upon buffers. Its strength is not in its self-evident lies and false imagination, but in the buffers that lie like walls and centers and prevent us from seeing more than one side at a time. So we do not see inner contradictions. They prevent us from bringing two things together, both of which we know separately. Because they have this curious action, lies and imagination have the power to control us. The time comes when the work finds us out for ourselves. One way in which it does this is to make a contradiction in us conscious to us that is, to make us simultaneously more and more conscious of what lies on each side of a buffer. Ordinarily we would be conscious only of what lies on one side and after a lapse of time of what lies on the other, and so see no contradiction. So the false personality, through the action of buffers, prevents us from meeting ourselves. It prevents a man from becoming quite open to himself without deception. So it is necessary to practice self-observation over a long period until its memory, which records both sides of a buffer, is strong enough to influence us. This makes it quieter. There is such a noise going on inside us due to false personality so many are shouting. 